This is the uh, third installment of the Dr. Dream character series or analysis. And for this one, we're going to concentrate on Nightmare. Um, and it really wasn't that difficult. I, M Nightmare may have been the first character. Well, actually, you know, the Dr. Dream and Nightmare, it's almost like a chicken and the egg kind of question, uh, which came first, right? Uh, between Nightmare, our, our main baddie uh, in the series, and Dr. Dream, our hero. Um, and I guess because you almost can't have one without the other. And so it seems that when it came time to actually play out in my head how this was all going to turn out and, and that sort of thing, it it seemed to me that if it was going to be a manga, that you know a dragon would be the figure that nightmare would take you know i i went about trying to come up with you know some kind of a you know what it would look like and that kind of thing and and i wasn't at that time i wasn't really drawing sketches or anything like that i i kind of just i knew that he was going to have you know the inscription nightmare on his on his in, you know on his on his head because i had seen that kind of inscription you know that kind of of depiction uh in other characters uh, in mangas also uh, you know various demons and things like that that I mean that goes way back to give you some kind of warning or indication as to who they are and so I wanted I definitely wanted that on nightmare and so when I when I kind of wrote that out and I turned it over to um, Federico scattered um, studios artist who worked on the first two issues um, and you know it came through great he looked menacing fantastic something that you know, Alice would definitely be afraid of and that kind of thing. And, and, and I always thought from the very beginning that Nightmare was going to sort of represent those sort of dark figures, those sort of dark features of the negative world and that kind of thing. And uh, to make him menacing, not just for this young girl, um, but also, you know, menacing for even, you know, an adult person not really knowing what's going on. And, and obviously, Dr. Dream doesn't know what's going on and has to do some research as to, you know, who this creature is and that kind of thing. And because um, he's kind of taken aback on that first encounter. I, you know, it, uh, Nightmare took a bit of hiatus because, you know, he's, you know, successful at, at getting rid of him in issue one. But it seemed to me as I was thinking about the stories later on and stuff that Nightmare really needed to come back uh, in a way because I think there was more to his story. And, and the reaction to, you know, when I was going around to conventions, the reaction to Nightmare was one of just, wow, that's really good. You know, the, people really liked that idea of this being you know, inhabiting somebody else's body and, and trying to take over the world as, you know, through the, through Alice and that kind of thing. So it seemed to me that that idea was working. So after issues two and three, you know, after, you know, having Dr. Dream experience a couple other things, as well as the crossover portion of that, we brought, I brought Nightmare back and towards the end of, of four. And in my mind, that set, that of course, it, once I got four done, or I was actually drafting four, I realized that, okay, Alice is growing up and um, there's got to be a reason why uh, Nightmare comes back. Uh, and I'm going to make that, I, I made that kind of apparent in another part of the script, which didn't make it into the main book, but it's in the ash can, um, which was um, part of the um, Kickstarter campaign for the fifth issue. So, so that was that part of that story was there. Um, though there was a reason why that was in there, uh, why Nightmare chose um, Alice uh, of all the people. He recognizes early on that she's got some powers and she's going to grow into those powers. So he figures that he will try to get to her when she's young, when she doesn't know any better. The reason why he's chasing her at night, night after night after night, uh, is to wear her down and to make her vulnerable so that way he can take over. Because after a while, you know, after we're beaten down on something for a while, we tend to get, you know, vulnerable if we don't have an ally there to sort of help us out. And maybe that's a little bit of commentary on my part and stuff, but we all need a helping hand every now and again someone with a greater expertise than our own. 
uh, and hopefully we have those people in our lives. And for Alice, it's it's Dr. Dream. We managed to find him at the right time. They managed to meet up at the right time. And of course, Nightmare is um, they have the there's the final battle uh, in issue five where Nightmare is finally vanquished uh, and put into a, a sort of mystic jar that Alice creates. Uh, and so the ultimate baddie finds his ultimate demise. Now, but the idea is that he, he, he's not dead in the sense because we always need some kind of a negative energy to be a balance for a positive energy. But he's now contained uh, within his own place, in his own spot. So by Alice putting him into the jar, it's not to kill him, but it's to say, this is your place. This is your spot. We know you're there. We recognize you, right? But you are not going to come in and terrorize this space anymore. And so that is basically the conclusion of that. And so I hope the, you know, again, the, the reaction I've gotten from the fans of the convention is they like Nightmare. It's, it's a really good baddie well drawn from both artists really from uh the first you know incantation in in uh the first issue of dr dream uh has turned out to be really uh, a really great uh and other artists have, have done their hand at it too uh, james burton did a, a headshot of uh nightmare and uh, of course jason has done a couple jason Duby has done a couple of versions of nightmare also you know i've enjoyed writing about nightmare uh hopefully artists have had fun with nightmare too and in a weird way it's almost like the i i kind of see nightmare as kind of a classic bad figure you know like those early uh universal monsters right with dracula and the mummy and things like that and and nightmare is is typically named a typical dragon and that kind of thing and we always seem to gravitate towards those kind of monsters though that they're just he's obviously very powerful and that kind of thing and and presents a you know a danger and that sort of thing and we always wanted to in a way protect our kids so introducing nightmare at that very early stage with alice being so young i thought was a really powerful statement for the very first issue and i think that's part of the reason why that issue um was you know named comic book of the week and um, it, when it made its debut back in July of 2018, it was just a very classic confrontation. And uh, Nightmare, of course, being, I think, one of those classic figures and that kind of thing, just, I, I think, just really got the series off to uh, a great start. So I hope you enjoyed uh, this series. Uh, and uh, for all things Scatter Comics, go to www.scattercomics.com. If you're interested in my work, uh, in the various projects that I'm working on, not just on Dr. Dream, but on some of the other things that I do, uh, feel free to check out www.keithcarmona.com.